Hello, my dear friends. I'm very glad to greet all of you, those of you who are into physical chemistry, just like me. Well, in today's class, we're going to do with a control test covering the first and the second laws of thermodynamics. <coughs> it was offered to Moscow State University Chemistry Department students, and there are as many as four assignments, three of which are theoretical, while the other one is computational where you're supposed to calculate the numerical value of some thermodynamic function related to a particular chemical reaction. In the first three problems, they ask us to derive a partial derivative related to a particular gas model. <coughs> so let's get started. Well, without any delay. <coughs> well, and... Um, I have prepared the first assignment for you. Here it is. Prove that for one mole of van der Waals gas, the partial derivative of dt over, over dv at uh, uh, constant inner energy equals a over cv twice v squared. This is what we're supposed to <coughs> prove. Okay. First of all, let me check whether it's working. Yeah, it's okay. Now, as you see in the first assignment, we're going to do with the van der Waals model. We have already dealt with a number of different problems concerning the van der Waals gas state equation. In one of them previously, <coughs> in one of the previous lessons, we derived the van der Waals inner energy equation, which is the following. You should remember this formula u equals uh, uh, heat capacity at uh, as a choric uh, heat capacity cv times uh, t minus a over v okay well um if we differentiate uh, both parts of the relation we will get the differential of van der Waals inner energy du Let's do that. So du equals CV times dt, because we, we accept the fact that <coughs> CV uh, doesn't depend on temperature. It's not like this in reality. However, in order to simplify our calculations, we can, uh, we can uh, take it as uh, the first step of approximation, I'm sorry. Okay, then, so CV times dt plus, plus a over v squared dv. Um, so I got this, exp uh, this expression uh, after differentiating the uh, right part of the relation. Okay. So if we look up at the partial derivative we're supposed to derive, this one, so we will see that first of all, we should somehow get the ordinary derivative dt over dv. We should somehow, it's the first uh, or intermediate step is to get this uh, derivative dv, I'm sorry, dt over dv. How can we do that? Easily. We should divide both parts of this relation into dv. What will we get? We'll get the following du over dv equals c times dt over dv plus a over v squared but <coughs> i'm sorry according to the statement of the problem uh, we know that inner energy doesn't change that means that u is constant and that automatically means that du equals zero and for that reason du over dv is equal to zero too moreover if u is constant that makes us believe that ordinary derivatives turns automatically into uh, partial derivatives so finally we'll get the following O equals uh, CV times the partial derivative of dv, dt over dv at a constant inner energy 
Okay. Um, what else? Plus a over b squared. And of course, from this expression, we can easily extract this uh, uh, partial derivative because this is actually what we're supposed to find. So dt over dv at constant uh, inner energy uh, equals minus a cv times v squared. That's it. As uh, the, there is a good expression, I want you to, uh, to learn it. Uh, its separation is q dot e dot d dot. <coughs> this separation stands for uh, good uh, quote, I'm sorry, quote, ered demonstrandum. Quote, uh, ered demonstrandum. Demon strandum. That's it. QED. Well, this is the first assignment. Now let's take a look at the second problem. Uh, hold a second, please. The second problem, uh, let me uh, prepare everything. Now, uh, in this case, we're supposed to prove that for one mole of Bertlow gas, uh, whose state equation is uh, P plus A over uh, T times V squared times V minus B equals R times T, the partial derivative of uh, Isaacorg uh, heat capacity over uh, volume dV at constant temperature equals um, this expression minus double A to, uh, over T squared uh, times V squared. I just want to <coughs> draw attention to the fact that now we are going to do with Bertelow gas equa state equation. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Hold a second, please. So, um, the partial derivative we are supposed to derive gives us a clue what exactly we should start from, as it contains a uh, heat capacity at constant volume in the numerator and the volume in the denominator. It is clear that we should start from entropy. First, we ought to recollect the formula based on its definition. What is it? It's uh, ds equals delta q over t but at constant uh, uh, at constant uh, volume q, uh, q equals c, uh, uh, heat capacity as a core heat capacity c of v times dt let's plug this uh, expression into this one instead of delta q I'm sorry. Uh -huh. And what we'll get? ds equals cv times a dt over t, right? So far, so good. Okay. From the just derived expression, we can extract uh, as a core heat capacity cv. Let's do that. cv equals um, t times uh, ds over dt. It's uh, ordinary. Um, derivative of entropy um, in respect uh, to temperature. Okay. But we need partial derivative, uh, dCV over dV, partial one. 
For that reason, we can divide both sides of the relation into dv. You see, we don't have any dv here, but it's not a problem. Again, what have we got so far? ds, uh, I'm sorry, not ds, <coughs> cv equals uh, t times ds over dt, right? We don't have any dv. It's not a problem. We can divide both sides of this expression into dv and we will get it. So what is it? Um, yeah, if we take the, uh, not only, I mean to say that if we not only divide into dv, but if we take uh, the first derivative, well, what we'll get? dcv over dv equals t times um, a ds over dt and over dv times dt uh, and dv. Okay, so we've got it. And what can we do now? But we need uh, the partial derivative of uh, dcv over dv. Okay. We've got this expression. At this point, we ought to remember that we can change the uh, differentiation sequence so that uh, the, di uh, the differentiate ds uh, not in respect of temperature, but volume. Yeah, we can do that. Thus, we have the following. We've got the following. Uh, D, CV, DCV over dv equals t uh, times uh, 1 over uh, dt times uh, ds over uh, dv at constant temperature. In this case, we can take the partial derivatives. Okay. But what is the partial, der <coughs> partial derivative uh, uh, which is inside of these uh, brackets? The inner partial derivative is one of the four Maxwell expressions. So this expression equals, we should remember that because we have derived this expression previously, uh, dp over uh, dt at constant v. Thus we can uh, write the following, we can rewrite this expression as uh, dcv over dv at constant temperature. If temperature is constant, uh, these are alternate uh, derivative terms into the partial one. So equals t times um, uh, times 1 over uh, dt, right? And here, uh, dp over dt at constant temperature. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It means that uh, we uh, take derivatives uh, of pressure in respect of temperature twice. That means t, d, uh, t p over d, t uh, in the second. Uh, how can we say in English? <laughs> it's not squared. Okay. In the second uh, degree, let it be so. And that means that we should uh, take, we should take the double uh, derivative, uh, we should double differentiate vertical equation. Yes. How can we do that? First of all, um, we should um, extract P from this reaction. Uh, I'm sorry, from this equation. So P equals P equals RT over V minus B minus A over T V squared, right? Um, the first derivative uh, dP um, over dT when V is um, constant. So it's easy to do. It uh, equals R over V minus B, right? Okay, 
plus a v squared and uh, t squared, right? Okay, yeah. But it's only the first uh, derivative. And we're supposed to find the second one. It's not a problem. We can write like this. These are the easy uh, mathematical notations. Okay, uh, this <clears throat> part of the, of the relation doesn't contain anything which is dependent upon t. That's why the derivative of this part equals zero. As for this one, as for this one, uh, so we've got uh, this, which is temperature itself, uh, but it's raised in the second, uh, minus uh, second uh, degree and um, for that reason uh, the derivative equals um, minus uh, double a over v squared and uh, cubic t mm -hmm. right and uh, we remember that we remember that uh, we should uh, multiply this expression uh, to t. In other words, d cv over dv at constant temperature equal, uh, equals t minus 2a v squared 2 cubic, right? And we've got um, minus 2 times a v squared two squared. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to prove. So we have derived this expression. So it's okay. Now let's proceed uh, to the next one. Let's proceed to the next one. Pardon me, please. I need some time to uh, get everything prepared. Ferguson. Oh, okay. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so it seems to me that I've got some problems uh, with the third assignment. Well, let me uh, do it uh, from scratch, please, okay? From scratch. Um. Yeah, now everything's fine. So uh, this is the third assignment we're supposed to do. Uh, we are supposed to prove that for one mole of Dupré's gas, uh, whose state equation is um, expressed uh, through the following equation, P times uh, V minus B equals R times T. The joule forms and coefficient is equal to this expression, minus uh, B over uh, the, heat co uh, the heat capacity at constant pressure. Well, um, it's not uh, that easy to do, but let's uh, try to do it as well. Uh, hold a second, please. 
-hmm. Now, <coughs> what should we start from? Uh, the partial derivative uh, dt over dp at uh, constant uh, enthalpy. Uh, so, um, so this partial derivative uh, in the equation to be derived gives us the idea what we what the start, starting point should be. It's enthalpy and its natural variables, uh, which for enthalpy are pressure and temperature. In other words, um, I mean to say that uh, we should consider as h enthalpy as a function of uh, pressure and temperature. Yeah. Okay. Well, but we need to get the partial derivative of temperature over pressure. Yeah, we somehow should um, get to this um, partial derivative dt over dp at constant h. Take a look at this partial derivative tph. We've got it here, uh, uh, h, p, and t. And that also gives us the idea what we should do next. Um, so to get uh, to get it, I mean to get to this partial derivative, we can apply the well-known chain rule applicable to partial derivatives, which can be derived from uh, this function. Uh, if we apply it to the function enthalpy, which it depends upon t and v, we'll get the triple cascade of the following partial derivative. So let's uh, do it right now. I guess that you remember this formula, this uh, widely used uh, uh, solution way, uh, dh over, come on, over uh, dp at constant t times dp over uh, dt at constant h times uh, dt over dh at constant p equals minus one. But we're supposed to <coughs> get this, uh, this partial derivative. We can get it here. Here it is, but taken in the minus one degree. Uh, that's why uh, dt over dp at constant h equals minus dh over dp at constant t times mm, times dt at constant dh. I'm sorry, dt over dh at constant p. Okay. <coughs> but we also can rewrite it, paying uh, attention to the second uh, term of this equation. Uh, let it be, the first one stay the same, dh over dp at constant t. But this one is one over dh over dt at constant p, right? I guess you, you understand what I have done. Uh, so this is the play with uh, nominators and denominators. And we also remember that the denominator, denominator equals C P. Um, it's uh, heat capacity at uh, constant pressure. In other words, we can write rewrite this, that this uh, partial derivative, which we actually need, here it is, is nothing but minus the partial derivative dh over dp at constant pressure, I'm sorry, at constant temperature, uh, divided into uh, heat capacity at constant pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the, uh, this is the high time that we recollected um, the enthalpy differential, dH. What is my, uh, what is it? what is it? It's uh, T times dS 
plus v times dp. I guess you should remember this equation because we have derived it numerous, uh, numerous times before. But we need to get the partial derivative dh over dp. So it's easy to do uh, because we've got dh, both dh and dp. And that means that technically we should divide both sides of this relation into dp. If we do it right now, we will get uh, uh, ordinary derivative dh over dp. Okay, plus volume v. But, <coughs> But as temperature is constant, temperature is constant, that gives us the opportunity to transform our uh, alternate deriv uh, derivatives uh, in the both side, in either side of the relation into uh, the corresponding partial derivatives. In other words, we can write like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but the thing is that I have I made a mistake. Um, no, not yet. Okay, okay. But the partial derivative of entropy over pressure. Well, let me take a look. Yeah, it's uh, one of the. Maxwell expressions, right? Maxwell expressions. Okay, and uh, mm, it equals, if we take a look at the list of the Maxwell expressions, we can do that because we have uh, proved them previously from Maxwell expressions, uh, ds over dp at constant t uh, equals minus, uh, the partial der derivative of volume over temperature at constant at constant pressure, right? And that allows us to rewrite uh, this expression like this, that um, dH over dP at constant temperature equals minus T times dv over dt at constant pressure plus v. And this um, partial derivative gives us the idea what we should do next. We should find the deriv derivative of v uh, in respect to temperature at constant pressure, uh, taken from uh, Bertolt equation. Let's do that. Uh, I guess that in order to do it uh, easier, uh, in a more, I would say, in an easier way, we can um, and we should uh, express V from uh, the uh, Dupre, uh, Dupre equation. So V equals uh, R times T over P minus V, right? Okay. And uh, the derivative uh, of volume with respect to temperature equals, equals, I guess it's easy to see, R over P. Okay. And because of this, we can rewrite this expression dH over dP at constant temperature equals minus t times r over p plus v. But let's take a look at uh, this expression. Um, rt over p, rt over p, rt over p uh, equals uh, v minus v. Right, that means uh, minus 
and RT over P from this expression, from this expression equals the V plus D, right? Uh, v plus V, and we've got to uh, plus D. That means the following, J, it equals minus B. Okay. And for that reason, we can write that <clears throat> uh, the gel Thompson coefficient are mu, which is the partial derivative of T over P at constant H equals uh, here it is, yes, here it is, dt, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this expression divided into minus cp, and this expression equals uh, b. And uh, so what does it mean? It means uh, minus b over cp. This is what we're supposed to prove. I hope that I haven't made any mistake. Again, hold a second, please. dh over dp. It's minus, uh, where is it? Uh, it's minus t times dv uh, uh, over dt at constant p. Plus v, yeah, okay. And dv over dt dv over dt dv over dt it's r over p yes i guess i made this mistake here uh no it's okay r over p mm -hmm. and dh over dpt minus trp Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, now, uh, these have been the first three theoretical, uh, theoretical, uh, theoretical problems. And now we are proceeding to the uh, fourth assignment, which is computational which is computational. One second, please. I just want to make it visible, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, here it is. So they ask us to calculate um, the change in uh, Gibbs energy of, uh, of the following reaction, the, the composition of carbonate, uh, carbonate uh, ferrum uh, uh, when uh, it decomposes, uh, forming uh, the corresponding oxide and carbon dioxide at 500 um, Kelvin and one atmosphere. Well, um, again, we're supposed to uh, get all necessary, all necessary uh, relevant uh, information, numerical values. Uh, from different reference books. Okay, I have already done it. 
I have already done it. So um, I just want to, first of all, to announce the main steps we're supposed to do in order to get the final answer, numerical uh, value of the uh, of the change in um, Gibbs, uh, Gibbs energy. The first thing we are, uh, we are supposed to calculate the change in uh, enthalpy of the whole reaction at uh, uh, one atmosphere at pressure equal, uh, uh, of one atmosphere and temperature 298 Kelvin. Then uh, we will do the same. Oh, no, 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 no. Then we will, uh, yeah, we will do the same, uh, calculating the, uh, the change in enthalpy of the whole reaction at temperature 500 Kelvin. Then we will calculate uh, the change in entropy uh, of the whole reaction uh, for at temperature 500 uh, uh, Kelvin. And then we will calculate uh, delta G at temperature 500 Kelvin. So let's do that. Um, it's, I guess it's comprehensible that we're supposed to start from Hess law, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So it's, of course, Hess law. The first thing we're supposed to use right now. I guess uh, if I don't speak much uh, right now at this part, uh, you will understand everything anyway. Uh, I'm using all the things we have done uh, before many times. And I guess you understand that in order to calculate the change of, uh, in enthalpy of reaction, so we add the enthalpy, the enthalpies of formation of the products of the reaction. F stands for the word formation. And then we subtract uh, the same related to the regions. Uh, okay. Also, we should take into consideration um, the coefficients, right? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'll write down, uh, um, that's uh, theorem O and that is uh, CO2, I'm sorry. Okay minus delta H of formation at 298 of, of uh, oh, that's all, that's all. And that, uh, that equals a minus 0.52, okay minus 264 into 5, okay, minus, minus. You should understand that I have taken all the all these numerical values from the corresponding um, <clears throat> reference book. I guess uh, you've got uh, such uh, data and uh, it equals 79.8, I'm sorry, 78. Um, kilojoules per mole, per mole. Okay, then uh, we also should <coughs> refer to Kirchhoff uh, law, and its integral form is the following. R stands for reaction at temperature five hundred equals. Okay, integral. These are the integration limits. Delta C P direction uh, times the T. Okay, this is the general formula. Now we're supposed to find out the way how this function lives. We use the same principle of adding and subtraction. <coughs> it's CP of CO2 plus CP of uh, uh, theorem O minus 
CP of theorem CO3. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Mm -hmm. times t minus okay and uh, finally we've got the following 46 28 minus 94.48 times 10, okay, minus 11.85 times, okay, <clears throat> and that allows us to calculate the change in the enthalpy or direction at temperature 500 by using this uh, equation. Oh, I'm sorry, plus three, of course, plus three. Oh. We have done uh, such integration uh, operations numerous times before. That's why I'm not speaking much because I hope that you understand what I'm writing and why I'm writing these things. You may also ask me where I've got these numbers. Um, let me write it uh, to be okay, and I will explain to you a bit more. Okay, and that gives us the answer. Joules per mole. Okay, um, the thing is that uh, in uh, corresponding uh, heat capacity dependence on temperature lists, you can find uh, corresponding equations related to a particular substance. How the uh, substance uh, heat capacity depends on temperature. Usually uh, such equations are given in the, for, in the following way, for example, Cp, equals A plus, plus uh, B times T plus C times T, C times T uh, minus two. That's it. And uh, these equations are given for each of the participants of the reaction, uh, the oxide, uh, the carbon dioxide, and the reagent which, uh, which it decomposes. Okay, you can uh, get these equations from <coughs> relevant uh, reference books. Okay, so we have just calculated uh, the change in enthalpy of direction at temperature 500 Kelvin, okay? Now, uh, in order to calculate the change in entropy of direction, first of all, we should uh, calculate uh, the change in entropy at temperature 298. Uh, okay. This symbol means uh, one uh, atmosphere. Okay, it's CO2 plus entropy of uh, uh, ferrum O 
minus entropy of uh, ferrum CO3. Okay. Um, it's 313.67 plus 60.75 minus 95.40. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I need to calculate. I need a calculator to get the right answer. Hold second, please. So, uh, sixty-seven minus ninety-five point forty plus sixty point seventy-five. So I've got the answer, it's 179.02 joules for more Kelvin. Okay. And now we are ready to calculate uh, the change uh, in entropy of the reaction. It's also a reaction um, at 500 Kelvin. using this equation. Over T times T. Okay. Again, uh, we have done it a million times. Okay, anyway, um, I will try to write a bit uh, more in detail, okay. We got this equation, delta uh, Cp uh, here it is. And if we divide it into T, we will get the following. We will get the following. Yes, here it is. This is the equation. Uh, Okay, yes, here it is, mm -hmm. yeah, um, we should divide this equation into T and we will get 46.28 over T minus uh, 94.48 times at minus 11.5, uh, okay, minus three dt. Now it's much easier now, much, much easier. It's relatively easy computational work. Um, Nature of algorithm. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eleven eighty five times so we have already calculated the answer it is a hundred and seventy nine point to nine joules per mole Kelvin. Okay. Okay. Now we are ready to calculate uh, delta G. Delta G of the reaction at five hundred Kelvin.
I'm plugging on the numerical values that we have just calculated. This one, the numerical value uh, of the change in enthalpy of direction. Uh, here it is. Okay, minus 500 times of this. And finally, we've got Got minus nine thousand eight hundred and eighty eight um, joules per mole. Um, so it is a negative um, value, and that means that at one atmosphere and five hundred Kelvin, the reaction of uh, the decomposition reaction. Uh, goes in the fourth direction <coughs> uh, with formation of carbon dioxide and the uh, ferrum oxide. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. I do hope that these assignments uh, have turned out to be interesting for you and uh, you have managed to understand uh, the way of the solution. If you have noticed anything, what I have done wrong, you believe so. Let me know. Okay, I will try to correct maybe if uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.